In this second video for abandoned house workflow, we are going to take our block and BSP that we did in the first video and texture it. We're going to use default textures that come with Counter-Strike Global Offensive version of Hammer Source and we're going to completely texture this house. So these images is what we're going to end up with. So let's begin. With the BSP version of the map open, I go ahead and save as a new version before I begin to texture. And the very first thing I do is replace every single texture in the map with no draw texture. I use the face edit sheet and the replace option to replace all the developer textures with no draw texture. And then I texture only those faces that will be seen by the player. And it's just easier to have the entire map covered in no draw texture and then only texture what will be seen. No draw texture does not render in game. And when you have no draw texture on those brush faces that will not be seen by the player, those brush faces do not get rendered. And this is one of the ways you optimize your map. So the game engine doesn't have to render a brush face that the player will not see. And that's what no draw texture does. Now there are a couple of workflows you could use to incorporate no draw texture better. Some people start their entire maps with no draw texture and then only texture what the player sees. Now I don't like to use this option because it's very hard to see what you're designing while having no draw texture on every single face of the brush. So I like to start with developer textures first then block in the entire environment. This way I can jump inside the map at any time and see all my geometry and not worry about texturing. Then once I enter the texturing stage, I replace every single developer texture with no draw texture. Then I begin to assign appropriate textures only to faces that will be seen by the player. This is the best option I found and the one I recommend. So, so far I have began to apply textures to the front walls of the house and to the rooftops. I open up the face edit sheet, click on browse, and I filter for appropriate texture I want to look for. So I filter for wood, wall, roof, and I just look through what's available. And once I find what I like, I double click to set it. It goes back to this view, the face edit sheet view, and the perspective viewport. And with the face edit sheet open, and the chosen texture set in the preview of the face edit sheet. I right click on the VSP surface to apply that texture. Here I am texturing the trim around the entire house. And a lot of the time I spend is on alignment. So once I apply the texture, I often need to align it horizontally, vertically, using texture scale, texture shift, and rotation. Also, as I'm applying the textures, if I come to an area where there are BSP brushes overlapping or there is something wrong with geometry, I make sure to quickly fix those issues. So there were a few overlapping brushes on the trim around the house and when I noticed it, I quickly fixed the mistake. So no matter what part of the process you are in, whether it's texturing, detailing, terrain, lighting, if you find an error or a problem that can be fixed in a minute or two, then I recommend that you take care of it right away. If it's a bigger problem that needs to be reworked completely, then write it down and fix it in its own process, in its own time. But if it's something that will take you just a couple of minutes, then stop what you're doing, fix it, and move on. So you will notice that majority of my time here is spent on alignment. And this process does tend to get very tedious, especially when you're aligning angled surfaces such as I'm doing here on the angled geometry for the roof, where I need to get the correct rotation value so the texture trim is properly placed. And as tedious as it may be, making sure that you align your textures is very important because nothing ruins the illusion of your map as misaligned textures. The human eye can pick up inconsistencies very quickly and misaligned textures along with incorrect proportions and scale of your architecture are probably the most common things that will lower the quality of your environment. And here I am using the same wooden trim that I used for the angle geometry of the roof 
and applying it to underneath the roof border. So I'm attempting to maintain the same texture for different parts of architecture in this environment. This creates a consistent visual theme due to texture repetition. And this concept of repetition is very important. To create a consistent visual theme that unites your whole map together so each section of the map looks like it belongs to the same world, you have to utilize the concept of repetition. So you repeat the same geometry, the same architecture, the same use of 3D models or prop statics and the same textures. It helps to create unity through consistency. So you don't want to use too many different textures that don't seem to fit together. You want to find the right textures that have the same color, same saturation, and similar amount of detail. And this will greatly help to bring your map together. So nothing seems to stand out like it shouldn't be part of your environment. So it becomes very important that you pay attention to reference, see what kind of textures the real environment uses, and then you try to find similar textures in the editor to texture the map with. Now you are limited to the textures that come standard with the hammer source version of the game you are creating this level for. And if you don't see a specific texture in the texture browser, you may have to create a custom texture to use or find something very similar to what you're trying to go for. So as I'm paying attention to my reference, I'm looking for textures that are close enough. And in the end, the house is not going to be textured exactly as it is in the reference because I did not create any custom textures and I used the default set that comes standard with this version of the editor. Here I attempt to add additional detail to the roof to separate the texture misalignment on the corner of the curved overhang and I created a new BSP brush to place on top with a different texture but I end up reworking that section and that area in a detail in the video. So I did place something there for now but I didn't like how it looked and I realized that I was spending a little bit too much time on detail in that section. So I stopped and I wrote down in the to-do list that this is something that I need to do on its own time in the detailing stage. And now I am continuing to add border trim to underneath the overhang and I use the different texture for the bottom of the overhang support. I then continued to apply textures to the columns making sure that everything is properly aligned. Then moving on to column bases, overhang ceiling and the house borders on each corner around the house. So I tend to texture the major shapes first. In this case, it was the walls of the house and then the roof. Those were the biggest graphical elements that once I had them textured, it dictated what kind of textures I should use for detail and secondary elements. The corner detail and the panels that go around the house use the same wooden border texture. So once I had one panel textured, duplicating that texture around the entire perimeter was fairly simple. And that's one of the benefits of reusing textures is that if you texture one element, the alignment can be duplicated for all the other detail that uses that same texture. Here I needed to texture the attic window, but I didn't have enough detail that you usually see in the attic window. So instead of leaving this for the detail stage, I went ahead and added that additional detail to the window and then textured it. This way I can take the textured detailed window and duplicate around the house instead of repeating the same steps like I had to do for the regular windows. So once I had that done, I took the attic window and duplicated it around the house. I then moved on to begin texturing the wooden beam supports for the side of the overhang. I looked for an older wooden texture that resembled the reference and I began texturing those wooden beams. Again, using alignment by shifting textures left, right, up and down so you don't see the repetition of that texture. If you're having trouble texturing your environment and not quite sure which textures to use, then you should always refer back to your reference. It would be very difficult for me to texture this house based on memory 
and imagination alone. There would be a lot of detail that I would miss. Then when you have proper reference and you paying attention to what you should use to texture and to create geometry. Then once you've used good reference, you can come back in and update certain textures if they don't fit the game environment. So there is a balance that you're trying to achieve. You are using reference to try to recreate what you see. But at the same time, you have to judge it based on how it looks inside the game. And there are a few cases here where I did not like how the stairs looked and I end up changing the stairs where in the reference there were concrete. But I end up creating wooden stairs which look a lot better than they did in the reference. I'm also quickly trying out different set of textures for the flat part of the roof. I tried out a few different ones but I did not like any of them. And later in the video I do end up changing them. So expect some trial and error where you use a texture but you end up not liking it and changing it later. Even if it looks just like the reference. The important part is, is find something that you like right now then continue and then you can always come back in later and update it and change it to something where it's more cohesive and to something that you like. Once I've textured the exterior of the house, I quickly move in to texture the interior. Now it's very important that I don't spend a lot of time here because the interior is a non-playable area. So I want to create an illusion that there is more to the house if a player looks in, but I'm not too worried about spending much time on interior texturing. So I apply a wooden texture floor, a wallpaper on the walls, and a basic ceiling texture. I then go back outside and finish off a few areas that I didn't get to for the foundation and the porch for the back door. Here I'm still struggling a little bit with the concrete stairs and I don't quite like that texture and how simple and basic the stairs look. So that usually tells me that the stairs might need to be changed and I end up reworking them completely in a detail video. Once I have everything textured in, I quickly look around the entire house to see if I missed anything. And then I jump inside the map and take a look at the textures from the point of view of the player in game. During this time I am noting textures that I will need to change or update. I'm trying to look for any misalignment, any textures that don't fit together, such as the very top of the roof, the flat part where the attic window goes to. And I'm just observing everything and writing down what I will need to work on when I come back into the editor. Usually when you see your textures in game with lighting and from the point of view of the player, it's very likely that you will end up changing textures in certain sections of your environment. And this is almost guaranteed. So here I went back in into the editor and I changed the flat part of the roof to another texture. And I update the foundation base. I also update no draw textures that I missed under the porch. And I quickly go inside and texture a few more no draw textures that I left for what looks like a table or some kind of a kitchen counter. I jump inside the game again, judge it from the point of view of the player, then go back into the editor and re-update the base foundation again. So this texturing process is not final. It is something that you're going to continue updating and changing as you get closer to finishing your map, finishing your environment. So the major texture pass is done, but you will continue to update, change, and rework some textures. So at this point, it's still an ongoing process, which I will continue to refine and finalize. 